Okay, let me just take the control here. We can advance the slide. I can advance the slides if you'd like me to, Rodrigo. Okay. No problem. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So it'll be easier Please for go us. Ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. <laughs> hey, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Welcome to the Accelerate Artificial Intelligence at the Edge with IoT and AR Mark Red Solutions, brought to you by US Ingram Michael Lenovo IS, ISG team, as well as um, Lenovo, our partners, MLTX. My name is Rodrigo de Souza. I am the Senior IoT Global Channel Business Development Manager. And today on this call, we're going to be having Alex Hawk, who is the Channel Manager, OEM and IoT Solutions at Lenovo, as well as we're going to be having Rafi, who is the VP of Business Development and a Strategic Partnership at MLTX. Next slide, please. Awesome. So today we will be walking you through on how we Ingram Micro simplify IoT and AI with Mark Red Solutions. We're also going to be having Rafi and Alex walking us through Meltex value proposition, vision AI use cases, customer wins, and also suggested uh, Lenovo Edge devices, and who you should be speaking with. With if there's anything here that you want to learn further or have further questions, please feel free to reach out. So to kick us off, can we simplify IoT? And the way. Ingram, Mike, we believe we can. And the way we actually got to this conclusion, we went around talking to many numbers of partners, many numbers of vendors, resellers, also went to many different industry conferences, and all that showed us that IoT is having very strong fatigue out there. There's a lot of overuse of marketing terminologies, a lot of buzzwords that is, makes it very difficult for anyone that actually want to start, you know, getting understanding or get start with IoT is very complicated. So our focus here and our goal is to take all the friction out of IoT and focus on solving those business problems, right? Focus on simplifying the conversation. These words, as you can see, they are words <clears throat> that comes to mind every time it's getting tossed around, you know, an IoT conversation. That can be from webinars, that can be from white papers, industry events, websites even. So it becomes very difficult to really sift through all the noise and really figure it out what the companies you know, we speak with can provide if they actually have a good service around IoT, if really it's a company that's going to support and help our business. So going back to the specific terms here, I don't want to undermine that because all these words and all these terms and concepts, it has its own importance. And I really don't want to undermine that again. But when we are talking about IoT and we're talking about I'm getting started with IoT, it's very important for us to figure out a conversation, a concept that it has that good understanding, right? How can we get back to that one on one level understanding of IoT before we get going to this more advanced concepts like you see here, digital twins, machine learnings, blockchain, and there's many more other uh, you know concepts within IoT overall. So we need to start by simplifying the approach and by simplifying the messaging around IoT. Next slide, please. And just to just another example of how IoT can be complex. Today at Ingram Micro, we have over 2,000 skills. Just folks in IoT. That's way too many skills for when we talk about a specific solution, a specific problem we're trying to solve. It, it can really easily go above our head. So, the way we started to simplifying IoT is by categorizing those skills. You know, what are they are, what are they doing with their specific end-to-end solutions, and how can we support that whole conversation and, and, and simplification of IoT so we can actually have a better understanding when I talk to the business people as well as the technical people. So can IoT be simplified? Yes, we believe IoT can be simplified. But we have to, again, to begin with a more a simple approach around IoT. Next slide, Rafi. Yeah. So we want to help our partners from all that confusion, right, around IoT and go to a straightforward approach to facilitate how we're building it, how we're talking about it, and how can our partners even build a strong IoT practice. So for that, we came up with a standard definition of what we believe IoT is. So 
if we talk about IoT in our end to end solution, and for us to be considered an IoT end to end solutions, it needs to have four key elements. You need to have a sensor, a gateway, connectivity, and a cloud platform, some sort of software, right? So for when, when, these four elements are working together to solve a business problem, it becomes an IoT, IoT and end solution in our eyes. And you know, you have many examples of it. You have you have a um, utility monitoring, you have an asset tracking, you have you know refrigeration monitoring, you have many other examples with what we believe to be an IoT uh, you know solutions in these cases. So when we break down IoT this way with our partners, it really gets me excited to be honest, is because most of our partners agree with us and they all have a like really strong practice they all have really strong business and now when they when they talk about iot and when they talk about you know getting ready for iot most of them are already you know installing gateways and controllers they already start you know already standing up wire and wireless now work on the connectivity side they are already very comfortable with cloud you know some are even um, very comfortable uh, with a uh, software or even writing software code so for us to break down and in, in getting them more, even more comfortable with IoT, maybe the new sense that they need to learn, or maybe the new sense they need to aggregate to their business is like installing sensors or yeah, others on a connectivity side or software side. So when you break down IoT this way with those four elements, the gap that's perceived from where our partners are to where they think IoT is has been major reduce right has been significant significantly reduced to where they're much closer of doing iot projects so if you focus on that side the barrier of adoption of iot has been reduced right has been very it's we're not closed we're now we're pretty much ready on doing iot and solving those business problems so can, you, can we mute just to make sure well everyone is understanding thank you so Going back to this, um, we in Gramark we have very we have two simple goals in mind. We want to simplify IoT for our partners on both sides. We want to simplify IoT for our vendor partners and reseller partners. We want to enable reseller partners to sell and deploy more IoT solutions that are solving business problems, and we want to enable our vendor partners to really scale their IoT business. And the reason why is because we believe that if a reseller partner is capable of deploying those IoT solutions, solving business problems, and our vendors are able to deliver the right technology and to the specific opportunity, we will help our, our end users fix and improve their business, right? And at the end of the day, it's going to be a win-win situation for us all. Next slide, Rafi, please. And for that, we in Grow Micro Global IoT, we actually have build a pro accelerator program who is um this program is it's consistent with these three distinct avenues and it is a structure to support and cultivate a repeatable business right you see the business accelerator program the solutions accelerator program and the go-to-market accelerator program on the business side this program is focused to really develop and increase the business um, acumen for our partners. You know, how can we talk about IoT? Who should we be speaking with? What kind of questions we should be having? You know, it's a technical conversation, the business conversation. How can we really support those partners developing their understanding around IoT? But also, with the support of our vendors, we are doing vendor-specific training. You know, what Lenovo, what Melt can actually provide to IoT that we should know that you know we can pro they can provide us training they can support us with training and have a better understanding around the business conversation when we go to the technical side i will talk i will explain a little bit more in the next slide but this is to support the tech the development of technical aptitude for our partners right you know supporting with our architecture designing supporting with the poc aspect um the technical sales conversation how can we really impact your business and be an extension of your business on the technical side where you're winning and having more success with your opportunities. In the go-to-market aspect, this consists with a, a scalable go-to-market strategy where we are supporting our sales team, both on the internal side as well as external side, where we are designing this multifaceted marketing plan that will deliver a wide range of assets, you know, contents with uh, white papers, collaterals, and everything's supposed to be on your fingertips where you really can actually reference across 
many verticals to support your sales conversation. You know, having uh, catalogs of solutions and have uh, collaterals where you are able to demonstrate and show to your to your to your opportunities overall. So all this is to support, you know, our strategic partners to really increase and be more ready for for the sales conversations. All right, Phoenix. All right, so go back going back to the technical aspect. You know, when we talk about the market ready solutions, and we also have a certified Ingram certified solutions. Ingram Micro, we are driving uh, a product driven strategy. Again, focusing simplifying IoT. For the market ready solutions, we are we are creating the solutions with support of Meltiac, support of Lenovo, and partner on, on that side, the vendor partners on that side to really design and, and the uh, exclusive real world customer use cases. You know, everything is tied to you know those validations that I was was mentioning. So we want to create very fast, you know, presentations, use cases where you guys can have more content to deliver and, and develop that conversation with your end users to be able to really nature that opportunity. And we are also developing Ingram Micro Certified Solutions. And those solutions specifically are vetted by successful completion of really comprehensive multi-vendor proof of concept. So these solutions, we actually, Ingram Micro, are getting our hands dirty, really developing those solutions with a range of customer use cases, and they are all tied to specific verticals. You know, example like warehousing, smart warehousing, smart building, you know, healthcare, and so on. So, those solutions would be vetted and validated, and uh, would be guaranteed by Ingram Micro and our partners that it will work and it will be uh, it's very um, plug and play kind of type of situation. And overall, you know, all this strategy, all this focus that we are having. There's nothing we can do here with our key vendor partners. So, Rafi and Alex will be walking us through what is exciting, what is you know, MeltCX have um, and, uh, and Lenovo has to be able to really support us building those solutions. Again, we are here to support you. We are here to be an extension of your team. And please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Rafi, can you please go to the next slide? My name is Rodrigo again. Uh, Dwayne Lanau, Lanau is the, also my, my my boss who is supporting us with these specific conversations and the directions with an Ingram Micro whom we should be speak with related to opportunities and technologies. For everyone here on this call for the next 30 days, uh, we're going to be providing you with a free two hours consultation services where it can be helping you with architecture design, can be helping you with the solutions validations, and we also can help you with your technical sales call, right? How can we nature and develop those opportunities? Again, our goal here is to help you have more wins and succeed. So with that, Alex, Rafi, why don't you guys walk us through what a, what a Meld and Lenovo has uh, have exciting for us and how you guys are supporting Ingram and developing those market ready solutions so we all can win. Great. Uh, Rodrigo, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, Alex, I'll go ahead and get us kicked off. I did want to mention that we do have um, the chat function on the side um, as well. So if we have any questions that we need to answer, uh, my colleague Leslie Smales has popped up. Hi, Les, um, can answer any of the questions while I'm uh, multitasking, uh, uh, clicking on a button on a, a screen and talking at the same time as my version of multitasking. So uh, Les is there to answer any questions that you have from the MLTX side. And we'll bring in Alex when we're talking about um, specific um, solutions that we've got going on with Lenovo. So uh, Rodrigo's point is so well landed because IoT can be so many things to so many different audiences. Specifically, what we're focusing on uh, with this part of MeltCX is uh, our presentation is about computer vision. Uh, but we also have a component where we're doing a device peripheral and application management um, on Chrome and Android devices that we call Melt Core. The computer vision solution is called Vienna. It's where we're getting a lot of attention and we're focusing a lot of um, our efforts here uh, in, in the U.S. And that's what we'll spend the majority of our time today on. Um, so what is Vienna? It's effectively taking the cameras that you see, right, that we see kind of in front of us right now, uh, and taking them into the largest sensors that you could possibly imagine, generating insights from those cameras, whether that be individuals about uh, human activity, vehicles. Um, we'll get into some use cases about 
planogram compliance. And there's a lot of um, data that can be out there and we can um, go through, we're gonna go through a number of different use cases, but I wanted to kind of point out a couple of things in the beginning, which is that we are um, uh, uh, not taking personally identifying information when it comes to individuals. So that is our landing slide where you see that there's faces blurred out, but there's a little bit of information about that. Um, so it gets a little bit confusing, but it's important to kind of break off this idea of facial recognition and also getting a little bit of data uh, about gender and age and sentiment, which are the things that we focus on, rather than trying to search for face, if you will, right? Um, there's some VMS products that do that kind of work. Uh, that's not what we're doing. Uh, and we'll go through a number of different use cases whereby the ability to provide data in a real-time basis that is logical, that is unbiased, uh, really helps out in a lot of different verticals. Um, so I'll go through a number of those use cases, but I wanted to bring that out first. Um, our ecosystem is pretty robust. Um, we were very fortunate to start working with Ingram uh, almost about a year and a half ago, uh, where we're headquartered out of Australia uh, for the APAC market. We've since been able to expand that to the United States and are now looking at globally. Uh, but from a back-end perspective, uh, we do a lot of work with uh, Google on GCP and also the Microsoft Azure platform. Um, in particular, uh, the uh, Fiana solution is uh, really focused on um, IoT and Azure, and we've got a couple slides that showcase that. Obviously, we're here with Lenovo, Lenovo powered by uh, Intel chips. Uh, we do a lot of our work on a computing perspective on the CPU and not the GPU, and, and that's important for a lot of reasons. Supply chain is number one. Uh, but it, it really provides us a lot more flexibility in the kinds of technologies that we're going to deploy to be able to drive towards those business solutions that the customers have asked us to do. Uh, we also have a relationship with Cisco Meraki, whereby we're getting inside the camera itself uh, for some um, inferencing for some kinds of technologies. So there's a couple of models of those Cisco Meraki cameras that we're able to do some uh, computer vision inferencing, if you will. We're going to be talking about a couple of use cases today. Uh, where we're seeing the most activity from a customer perspective and from a channel perspective uh, in manufacturing and warehouse examples, uh, healthcare, and also retail. Um, I'll say it again, uh, that we have the chat open if anybody has any questions uh, for me, and Les will uh, interrupt me um, if she uh, feels as though I need to go ahead and address anything. All right, so let's go a little bit deeper on what it means to have anonymized persona, because this is really important. When people see cameras, they kind of get really stressed out about what that is. But we, um, the way the technology works is that we take a video feed effectively and we recognize one model looks at, is there a person in frame effectively, right? And then another model says, okay, well, if there's a person, we're gonna make sure that we take a little bit of information, gender, age, and sentiment predominantly, um, but we also look at directionality. I'll go into that in a second. And then we basically blur it out live right? And then get rid of the image entirely after we've been able to generate information. Um, if that person has went ahead and left, then we don't need that data anymore. We're not storing that data. We're not bringing that data in the cloud. We're not taking pictures of people and building a database effectively, right? Um, that's number one. The second thing that I think is very important is that we are building our models synthetically. What synthetic means is that we're using the same kinds of types of technology that video games and movies are being used to create effectively artificial faces, right? Um, so that allows us to create billions and billions of data points, right? Without ever using your face or my face or Leslie's face or whomever's, right? And we can bring all those things together to look at not only face, but what people are wearing and the bag that they may be wearing, the way that people walk to, to be able to track kind of unique people throughout an environment for retailing or for the different use cases that we'll discuss without really knowing who the person are, is because we don't care who the person is, right? And I'll go into a lot of the way that we've got you know, security and some of the non-face behavior um, characteristics that we look at, okay? All right, so let's talk about problem statements because um, both Leslie and I come from the channel. Um, we know what it means to uh, be able to work with the vendor and say, well, the technology is interesting, the technology is cool, but what does it mean? How does it translate to my customer and what they're trying to do? So what we try to do is provide high level infographics about specific verticals to say, what are all the ways that you could use computer vision 
inside a healthcare environment, right? So what we see here is um, a few examples of some things that come canned and some things that we can train for effectively. And I'll go into our training a little bit later, but we have the ability to utilize that synthetic data platform we talked about before to look for specific business outcomes, things like slip and fall or aggressive behavior. Um, those are kinds of physical characteristics that require um, some exploration to figure out what actually is going on. But we're looking at you know, sentiment analysis, where people are, how many people are inside with, within the building itself, how they move within different zones. And then we've got a model that runs to look at um, uh, hand tracking and where people are from a cleaning perspective as well. So we look at the aggregation of human activity around surfaces and like a cafeteria to be able to go ahead and clean. So, so these are some of the models as we apply them to healthcare. Another one is uh, uh, safe workspaces, right? A lot of the same models, but kind of played out in a different way. We're looking at maybe utilization a little bit more, right? About how people are going in and using conference rooms, how many people are in the building at any given time. Um, you know, there's a lot of folks that are going back to the office for the first time in two, two and a half years. Um, and facilities managers really want to understand what that utilization is to figure out if they're allocating space the correct way, right? Um, retail, of course, is a big one for us. We've got a couple of use cases around here, but not only occupancy, but where people are spending their time, what kind of products they're engaging with, um, how is the staff to customer interaction uh, taking place? And uh, what we get the most uh, requests for is what are their personas of people that are in my space at any given time, um, effectively taking brick and mortar and turning it into a data source that's akin to a website or a mobile phone, that level of data that we can gather, okay? So without any uh, questions so far, Les, I think we're good. Um, we'll go in and, uh, I've got one right there. Uh, how to anonymize personnel's deal with compliance, i.e. PIA data, fantastic. All right. so. Um, I'll, I'll repeat this, but if you want a more uh, technical conversation on this, more than happy to have it. But effectively how it works is whether we're using a Meraki sensor at the edge or most commonly, um, you know, a edge device powered by Lenovo, powered by the Intel Open Vino chipset, we take the stream, right? We take it and we inference live and then destroy the image and never store it. So if you had to build a solution, uh, which we'll talk about in a second with Alex, uh, uh, with computing, there's very little storage that we need. It's not a VMS, right? We're not taking things for a year and then you know figuring out what we're doing with it. We we take the image uh, on the stream, we inference it, and then we get rid of it. The actual um, uh, stream itself. So we're not um, storing in information at the edge, and we're not pushing any information on PII up into the cloud outside of a unique encrypted ID of folks that are within the camera view, either in one camera right? If we're looking at tracking effectiveness for digital signage, for example, or multiple cameras, if we're looking to re-ID individuals moving around a retail environment or a workplace, but when that person leaves our field of view, effectively that data is destroyed. Uh, and we've got lots of technical documentation that is surround that because we sell in Europe, uh, also sell in California. So GDPR compliance is very important for us. And we've got the documentation to address that. So we can go ahead and do that. Thank you so much for the question, though. Um, so when we go from the top-down view of all the things that we can do within a particular environment, let's look at specific kind of use cases, right? This one's pretty straightforward. Uh, parking management, license plate recognition. These are some of the um, activities that we're going to want to go ahead and, and track, and it's part of our standard service offering. I think it pretty much makes sense. People understand you know, what this use case is, right? Entrance and exit and being able to track cars throughout that process. Um, very similar to um, entrance uh, monitoring as well. So instead of looking at the car and you're looking at the uniqueness, looking at kind of the individuals and the uniqueness as well. So it's not a trip line, right? Because there's a lot of that when you go into maybe a convenience store, grocery store, where there's that little trip line that uh, hits the chime. Um, we're really using the camera um, and drawing, see that black box, uh, within the camera view to figure out um, how many unique people are coming in, how many unique people are kind of going out, what are the very broad level demographics uh, and personas of the folks that are coming in and out. Uh, talked about this before, but surface tracking is a model that we have. We call the SAMI. This was kind of our COVID response, if you will. Uh, and this combines uh, body tracking and movement, like where people are sitting 
in any particular environment, and also with hand tracking. So we're combining multiple models, which increases the need for edge computing to be able to create that in real time, set thresholds on that about how dirty it can be, if you will, before you alert a cleaner to go ahead and, and, and go ahead and clean it. And then we have SLA based uh, reporting that we can uh, generate out of the system as well. So if anybody's interested in this one, um, it was kind of a lots of activity throughout the height of um, uh, the COVID pandemic. Uh, and now it's something that we're actually repurposing for retail purposes, which I'll talk about here in a few slides. So um, zone engagement, what this means to us is effectively where people move throughout a system across multiple cameras, right? Um, so we can break out individual zones within any kind of environment. This is, again, is just a retail example uh, about where people are moving. So we kind of get that first information when we're they're walking in the door and we're kind of registering, if you will. And then you can kind of see how people move throughout an environment, how long they're there, how many things that they've interacted with in a particular zone. And then again, as they leave, we go ahead and destroy that data. They're just kind of a data point, right? We're not keeping any information about the individual. Uh, but this is one where um, just this, we think of it as kind of basic level information, but just this basic level of information is extremely valuable uh, to retailers. So if you say to a retailer, do you want to know how many people are in, but also what they interact with and kind of what their sentiment is and what their personas is, you're probably going to get a yes. Uh, and, and if you do get a yes, please do engage Dwayne and Rodrigo and the folks over at Ingram to um, have that initial conversation. They're going to be our front line to be able to scope these things out, to figure out if we are a good fit for what your customer is actually providing forward. Okay. Um, one of the more advanced use cases, if you can think before about how we're looking at how individuals move throughout an environment, we're also looking at um, a, a couple of projects to track things like uh, forklifts, right? And about where people are supposed to go within a manufacturing environment to keep them safe. I was, uh, I was always alarmed to read this, but there are tens of thousands of forklift accidents every single year, um, and it's persistent, and it happens year after year, and actually. Um, the amount of e-commerce that's going on, those things are starting to tick up and start to actually increase. So how do we utilize cameras to be able to um, set up the business rules so that we can do alerting based on the kinds of behavior that we want to see and what we don't want to see, right? Um, people driving too fast on the forklift, uh, people walking in the in midst of places they're not supposed to go, right? You'll see that there's a picture. This is a, uh, you'll see in a lot of our imagery, right? We we kind of allude to specific uh, types of customers or environments that you do not want to be around that articulating robotic arm, right? But you definitely have the um, uh, uh, forklift has the ability to drive within certain zones. People have the ability to drive within di different zones. Making sense so far? Okay. All right. When you want to get a little bit more um, in depth, um, this is what requires we call customized training. So we've got um, human behavior tracking and human activity uh, uh, as it relates to how somebody's acting, right? It's almost like if you, you, you'd know it if you'd see it, right? You'd know if you saw somebody on the side of a road about to get into a fight with somebody. They're aggressive. They're, their face is flushed. They're really ready to go after it. But it's very difficult to set up technology to be able to um, observe that information, if you will, right? Um, so what we're doing and exploring with our customers is, again, mapping out all those different types of behaviors with paid actors in um, motion capture suits to be able to kind of create these models. So this does need customization. Some of these models kind of work right out of the box. Some of them are tailored for specific environments. That's why it's so important to get in touch with the Ingram team um, so that they're able to help us kind of vet um, good fit kind of out of the box or good fit would require a little of customization, custom training. Same thing with slip and fall. Um, it's that we're seeing this a lot from hospitals. We're also seeing it a lot from retail and even warehouse environments where it's like um, you've seen you see a person on a bed and then two frames later, right? They're on the floor, um, even creating audio alerts. Some of the technologies that we're looking at, um, we can sort of interpret um, uh, audio uh, messages for things like, you know, please help, like it says here on the screen. Um, combine those together to be able to alert. 
But again, t- it takes a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of customization to ensure that it works within a particular customer's environment. Okay. Um, so we can get even more in depth um, where we're looking at um, supply chain and production lines. Um, this is a project, this is referencing a project that we'll be launching here in the next couple of weeks uh, where we are looking at um, chicken products. It's my favorite one. It's one of my early ones where we're creating uh, hundreds of millions of different synthetic um, uh, chickens to be able to do label validation and verification uh, to be able to help the human operators um, go forward. Um, hey, and we've got some real world use cases. Yes, Leslie, go ahead. Yeah, so we have another question. What Please. is the lead time that is necessary to build out a custom solution with MeldCX and Lenovo? Ah, great question. Thank you so much. Um, so it depends. Um, there is, uh, we've got kind of a, and we skew these up within the channel. Uh, it's important to note, right? We've got a couple of different software um, levels that we've got, anything from light to kind of enterprise, enterprise being custom. And then we've also got custom model training packages which go anywhere between about 60 days to about 180 days from start to finish. That includes um, business analyst work in the beginning to be able to really scope and document and put it on paper for a scope of work, the customer to sign it off. Uh, and then through this synthetic model training, through the delivery and the testing, user acceptance uh, criteria towards the end. So between about 60 to 180 days, depending on how complex the models are, We've got uh, so an example of an easy project would be if we want to train our models on a particular staff uniform, right? So for in a retail environment, and we want to be able to look at sentiment analysis, but only for customers, and we want to filter out staff. I believe I have a slide on this in in a couple. Uh, we can do that, you know, fairly easily, right? So if we any of your ABC store, right? ABC store has a uniform. We want to be able to train for it. The larger one, the more complex ones are going to be in the human activity, right? Because that's nuanced. That's a lot of processing, a lot of testing to ensure that we've got that working. And then we have to test it and test it and test it over again before we can actually deploy it and feel confident uh, in that level of deployment. So hopefully that answers the question. And we can, again, you know, talk about this uh, uh, again as we progress forward. Okay. I'll take a deep breath and kind of bring it back down to verticals, right? So how do we tie these things together to be able to go towards a business outcome that we've been asked for? So we've been working with lots of hospitals, again, who has suffered under tremendous burden within this pandemic all across the world. And what they're starting to see is that they need a combination of different models, solutions to put together to be able to increase their hospital security, right? Um, So we've got a a, a hospital, multi-location hospital, within a Victoria region within Australia that is looking for audience measurement, i.e. people that are waiting, what are they looking at, what are they engaging with, um, how many people are coming in for entry monitoring, where do people go, zone engagement, right? And then we've got um, some advanced people counting and person of interest tracking that I'm going to get to in a little while um, that we can look at from a security perspective, right? So I'll touch on that in a second. Uh, another one um, that we can, we're can we very proud to talk about publicly is the Australia Post. It's a retail example. We're combining tons of different things, looking at surface tracking like we talked about before. We've even built a, a smart kiosk that has the ability to recognize handwriting and boxes and measurement uh, in order to be able to create a um, frictionless checkout experience, if you will. But kind of think about it as the post office. If you're standing in line, I think everybody has been in the post office at some point, standing in line for quite some time. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you might just want to buy stamps. Some of that self-checkout works really well, but being able to actually ship a package is challenging. You've got your own handwriting, you've got different sizes of boxes, so we've built that as well. And we've also found that there's problems with, um, uh, uh, in a loss prevention environment, uh, people stealing effectively. They fill out a box, pretend like you put an expensive iPhone in it, Um, put it in there, but leave it open and say the box flew open uh, and I'm going to file an insurance claim on a a package that was never sent. So we're looking at um, what we call proof of lodgement, people not only doing the self-check-in, but also actually dropping it off and it's complete as well to fight against insurance claim because that's a huge cost center for the business. This is one that we're very proud of and uh, very excited to be able to kind of bring forward. Also got another retailer within the Australian market, not quite comfortable sharing their name yet, Uh, But we're working on, again, some of the same models that we've got, 
but applied in slightly different ways. So audience measurement about what people look at from a product perspective, and then how people are actually reaching out and engaging and spending time in front of products, right? Because it's not necessarily, we're using the same model as you can see the heat mapping, not on a flat surface for cleaning purposes, but you know, in a 90 degree angle, if you will, for the different products that are on a shelf. If the camera can see it, we can track it, right? And we can tie that back to uh, the planogram and how people are engaging with specific products. I'm just gonna do a quick time check for myself. Okay, 136. Alex, I won't short you, I promise. Okay, uh, we discussed earlier the, the, uh, the meat product, if you will, the project, if you will, right? About um, some of the things that we're working on there. If anybody has any questions about this one, I can go in depth on this one. I can, unfortunately, for Leslie and other of my colleagues, I can talk about chicken for a long time. I won't do it today. Uh, but another project that we're working on is exceedingly complex, requires a lot of computing, but it's a very big problem. Uh, we've got a coffee manufacturer out of Europe that's got real loss when it comes to picking and packing solutions, right? I think anybody that's associated with building out warehouse solutions knows that it's very, very complex. It changes all the time. Um, it's typically done through third party uh, organizations. So the brand will contract out through a third party and they have very difficult time doing process control, right? at the edge. And that's really what we're trying to do. Track the individual, track where the hand is moving, track the sleeve that they're pulling out, track it into the box, ensure that that box is correct before it gets sealed and shipped. Because once it's sealed and shipped, you're not going to know if you have any problems, at least for about you know 60 to 90 days, as it gets to the customer, they unpack the box, they may call the complain if something has been wrong, right? But they, they certainly don't complain if they get too much coffee, right? That, which happens quite a bit. Um, so let's talk about architecture. Uh, from a high level, we're looking at sensors, uh, and we power our solution um, uh, for the more complex models utilizing Intel's OpenVINO platform. What this is, is if there is a CPU that can run these models, we can run on them. And we'll go through a couple examples of different types of technologies uh, that uh, the Lenovo folks have in their Crosswave program um, that allows us to take these really, really, really complex models um, and lots of data to be able to uh, uh, chew through, right? Video is large. It it's, uh, could have a lot of data that's in front of it to be able to kind of get through it quickly. And from the cloud perspective, once we do that inferencing through the OpenVINO platform, we do our backend data analysis within the kind of Azure IoT stack, right? And we can talk about this ad nauseum if anybody's interested in. So. From model perspective, I alluded to this earlier, we've got kind of a light going all the way up to enterprise. And enterprise is kind of the more custom models. Light are things that we can do kind of directly from some of those Cisco Meraki cameras we talked about before. The majority of our models are gonna be in a standard and kind of premium environment. They're all skewed up. They're all ready to be pulled down from Ingram, but it's important that we have the Ingram folks talk to you first to figure out if this is the kind of right environment and right solution. Um, so I think, Alex, that's it uh, for now for me. I know that you wanted to talk about some of these uh, products. So would you like to go through some of them and, yeah, and well, talk about the well, Crossway program? Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Rafi, and welcome uh, team here. Um, I wanted to take a step back and and um, and talk about the power of three and and how orchestration is so important here. I think it's really, it's really uh, important to see that the, the partnership we have here in place with MelCX and, and Ingram is is key to the success. Um, Lenovo tries to make everybody's life easier, and we are we're a channel first company. Um, and with that, Ingram uh, is our go-to partner, of course, for for solutions that that we pre-vet and the Crosswave program that we um, have in place now for a while really helps you to reduce risk during the uh, the implementation. Because with you know uh, a partner like like MailCX, we would go through a pre-vetting process, and the products you see here, the edge computers, have been you know vetted and certified to run certain aspects or certain levels of the MailCX uh, software, and we can help you um, pick the right product for for each of the solutions. But what I want to also uh, to to point out is that the products you see here. They obviously a, a, only represent a small fraction of the product portfolio, but these specific uh, Think Edge uh, products here 
have been hardened. They have a longer life cycle that typically warranted for three to five years and under certain circumstances longer. Um, they uh, comply with certain temperature requirements that you might have that um, uh, or dust or IP ratings that you might be required if you will deploy a solution, you know, outdoors uh, or where you are not in a, in a temperature controlled environment. What's also important is that these devices are Azure certified. And so with all these, these, these kind of pre-certification, it really reduces the risk during the, the implementation process. And also what we're looking for in the Crosswave program is to have robust solutions that can be you know, repeatable. Because as a channel partner, you, you wouldn't want to do a, a one-off. You want to have a solution that can be deployed many times over. Um, and with that, maybe let's move on to the next slide. So I, I'd like to highlight three products. SE, S stands for Smart Edge. Um, these are fanless designs, as you can see here. There's there's no moving parts in there, and that reduces also uh, the risk and cost of uh, of repair. Uh, this would be an entry level product that can support up to four cameras, and uh, that would you know pair well with the Viana uh, Viana standard package. And we have a couple of phrases to listen for that helps you to determine which product would go with which uh, solution. Let's move on to the SE50. Yeah, um, that's kind of the next level up here, uh, five to 10 cameras. And what's also important here is that, as you can see, these products are um, have a multitude of ports from USB to USB-C, uh, wireless for, for backhaul, they have uh, even Bluetooth and so, those are those are just the right products for a AI solution. Let's move on. And all the way up to an edge server that can you know really help with the real time inferencing here. Ten to twenty five cameras uh, run a Xeon processor, and they also offer a simple management via the Lenovo X Clarity platform. With that, back to you, Rafi. Uh, I think I don't know if we have questions or time for questions, but. Uh, that we definitely have time for it. Uh, any questions for Alex? Um, I'll take a look at the chat here real quick to see if uh, there was anything about um, any one of the um, solutions that we had offered uh, here. Anyone, any questions? If um, not, oh, go just ahead. Really quick, just, just really quick, Rafi, maybe this would be a good time to introduce Jamie just because um, she's aligned with Lenovo and Alex, if that's OK. Absolutely. Yeah, Jamie, so would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Melissa. So my name is Jamie Torkowski. I'm the uh, solution sales executive uh, on Ingram. Uh, I support all of the U.S. solutions uh, for Lenovo ISG. So anything you need as it relates to those solutions or support, uh, go ahead and shoot me an email or give me a call. I'll put my contact information in the chat for you guys. Thank you. That's it. That's you guys. Thank you. That's great. Uh, it's it's it, what what I. Personally, you know, coming from the channel and and working um, uh, with different type of customer bases, what I think is really important to note here is that not only are these kind of three kind of components that we're highlighting, but they're also mix and match, right? So the way that the software and the hardware kind of plays together is that we might have a environment. Let's take a workplace environment, right, where we've got a large building where you've got a, a, a a bunch of cameras kind of in one location, but they also have parking garages, right? Where you need to extend license plate recognition or kind of other, you know, person detection outside of the core kind of corporate campus. You can have your solution of kind of SE 350s that really sit within the corporate campus, for an example, and then 30s or 50s that kind of sit out at the edge, all working together, all kind of coming up and combining and making one solution together. So that's why it's so important to work with your solution architects to figure out exactly, okay, what is the what are the physical constraints that we have to work with? What are the network constraints, right? To really kind of determine the right solution. So I wanted to make sure that we kind of highlighted that really quickly. Okay. Right? Hey, Rob, Rob we do actually have a quick it. question. Oh, oh so. Rodrigo? Yeah, so uh, just so, uh, Leslie, then we asked the question, but, uh, and that's where 
Ingram Micro is here to support, right? As Rafi mentioned, it's very important to have the understanding of the environment. So we actually pick and choose the right solutions and hardware to support those solutions. And that's why we are here. You know, if you have a lack of, you know, bandwidth or, or competencies around that specific use case, we are here to support you. We have technical experts on call and they, we have a strong team that actually can support you develop and, and nature those opportunities. Thank you, yeah, Leslie. Rico. Yeah, absolutely. Leslie, why don't you ask the question? Sure. So we have a, a question from chat. Does this run separately from the client's existing physical security solution? Ah, it's a great point. OK, so we don't have this technical slide that's available for, but you're just going to have to we, we can always follow up uh, and, and give you a little bit more technical details. But there's a couple of ways to get effectively camera feeds into the system, right? You can be on a 30 and have it directly connect in, right? You know, camera, USB camera directly into a system. You can be on a 350, for example, and be able to um, take it in over the network. So if the cameras have RTSP or what's called ONVIF support, O-N-V-I-F, we can take it over the network and we can even sit in the back of a existing VMS. So if there's a VMS solution that's already on site that they've used, invested in for a couple of years on the security solution, but they're looking to be able to create data analysis on top of that, we can sit in the back of or in the front of a VMS as well. There's a lot of ways for us to kind of fit within the system so long as we can have access to the camera feeds on the same network we'll be able to uh, process that data. It's an excellent question. Hopefully I answered it okay. All right, a couple more. I think we've got a few more minutes. Uh, we've got about you know 10 minutes left on the call. So we wanted to show off a little bit. Um, so from a manufacturing environment, uh, we've talked about chickens before. I told you I was gonna talk about chickens again. Um, but the reason we're bringing this up is all of the, the, the imagery outside of this one down here, these, uh, this top one and this one over here on the right, it's what we created, right? So it's completely artificial. That's what we talk about synthetic data. What we're really doing is creating photorealistic environments that mimics what a camera would see, including light reflection and you know smudges and partial obscuring and tilting and all the things you could do to, to that might happen in a real world. We do it utilizing effectively artificial intelligence to be able to train those models as quickly as we can. So the ROI on some of these uh, projects are extraordinary um, because what we're doing is we're helping out the folks, you know, not only decrease the amount of errors that are going out in a given day, but also decrease the amount of people that have to manage those um, solutions because it's very hard for a person to sit for eight to 10 hours a day and then just look at a hundred packages, you know, per minute. Is it right? Is it right? Is it right? Is it right? And you start thinking about, oh, did I leave the gas on? Or, you know, what am I going to do this weekend or all the rest of it? And oh, your brain starts to kick back in again and you've lost it, right? So that's the ability to create those digital twins, I think are really important. That was the manufacturing example. This is the grocery example. It's a PDF, so it doesn't have all the cool motion, but we can go very granular, right? Grocery stores with individual products within every single uh, thing that you have in here, you can see that there's shadows that are on here. You've got, you know, little labels and things like that. The level of granularity that we can get to is pretty extraordinary. Um, and then we're returning back to this idea of getting in touch with Dwayne and getting in touch with Rodrigo, getting in touch with Jamie to really um, have those initial conversations, right? There are your resources to say, how do we explore this in a little bit, right? And, you know, frankly, are we the right fit? Because that happens a lot where, we might have an interesting conversation and they might hit a dead end with us because there's there's some components that maybe not necessarily fit, which is why it's so important to talk to the Ingram folks too, because they'll know if it's the right fit for us or if it might be a um, non-camera solution that you might be looking for, right? That might fit in the budget for your customers or other places. We won't take offense to that at all. The goal is to do the right thing for your customer, right? At the end of the day. Um, those were the, the slides that we had for, for today. So I'm going to kick it back to Rodrigo, Alex, uh, Melissa, anything else that you all wanted to cover? Any additional questions? Um, I think just from my side, thank you guys. I really appreciate the collaboration on this event. It's been awesome. Um, the one thing I just wanted to bring forward, and this is something that we're learning, as this is relatively new, I would say, in our space, 
is the sooner that the, our partners, so the folks on the call, get us involved in the conversations, um, the better we can help them. Um, because if we get a partner coming to us and asking us to quote, for example, just an SE350, we're not going to know unless we start having the conversations that that SE350 is part of a IoT solution, right? So, you know, please, like these guys have been saying, don't hesitate to reach out to us and make sure, you know, we're getting this in here sooner than later. But anyways, thank you so much for your time. I don't know, Rodrigo, if you have some closing thoughts, Alex? No, absolutely. This is great. Great opportunity to actually demonstrate how we are simplifying IoT and how our partners like Lenovo and MeltCX are supporting us with those solutions, validations, and, and helping us simplify the conversation. And everyone, we have a big team behind us. Like It's not just us. We are the face here today, but we have a huge organization structure to support and scale your business. So please, again, don't hesitate. Don't think we're not going to have bandwidth or actually we will be able to really support and expand your opportunities to win more business. So thank you. All set. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys.